Well, a big hello everybody and welcome to the next episode. I'm actually on my way to Chelmsford Cathedral today and I'm starting my journey here in Tyndall Street. Now, Tyndall Street, in days gone by, used to be a very busy thoroughfare, but now it's not much more than a back street. But here in this particular street, there has been a couple of big disasters. Two very big fires, which in total killed 20 people. Now, these 20 people are actually buried in Chelmsford Cathedral, and that's where I am heading. But before I do, I'd just like to show you a few photographs on this, on the other side of the road, and it give you a little bit of an idea of the history of Tyndall Street. They're quite impressive photographs. And there's been a few pubs in this street as well. The Bell Inn, the White Hart, Spotted Dog Inn and the Dolphin Inn. So I'm going to be sharing some of the history of Tyndall Street along this journey because the victims of that actual fire are actually buried in Chelmsford Cathedral in one grave and I'm going to be taking you there shortly. We're heading over to Chelmsford Cathedral. Chelmsford Cathedral has actually been rebuilt at least two or three times. On one occasion it actually collapsed and was built by the same guy who built the Shire Hall and the Stone Bridge. But all of his history, everybody, will be coming shortly. Here along Tyndall Street, one of the public houses was located at number 24 and was called the Spotted Dog Inn. Here lies the site of one of those tragic fires. The Spotted Dog was unfortunately demolished in the 1960s, along with the rest of the buildings located on the west side of Tyndall Street to make way for a new shopping precinct in its place, now called High Chalmer. The Spotted Dog, which was sited on the west side, had stabling for horses at the back of the property. Tragedy struck the inn when a fire broke out within those stable blocks, killing 13 German soldiers. It happened on the night of October 22nd. 1804. A troop of 70 Hanoverian soldiers had arrived in Chelmsford en route during the Napoleonic Wars. Accommodation in the town had been scarce for the new arrivals, so they found lodgings in the stables at the Spotted Dog Inn. Before they went to sleep, the soldiers started smoking as they settled in the straw for the night, but the sparks from their clay pipes soon ignited the straw which they speedily had to extinguish. They didn't extinguish the flames fully and later that night the soldiers woke up to find the stables fiercely blazing from a ferocious fire. Ignorant of the latch of the stable door, the soldiers found they couldn't escape to the outside. Help eventually came to release the troops, but not all as 13 of the men perished in the fire. The verdict was accidental death. And on the day of the burials, hundreds of troops that had been billeted in the town lined the streets with reversed arms. And a military procession passed through them in memory of the soldiers. The 13 coffins were buried in one grave within Chelmsford Cathedral Churchyard where their final resting place still remains today. Now just over here, these graves here, these are actually the graves of those victims, including the soldiers and three women. Now the soldiers died in 1804 in quite a big fire 
and the women in 1808. A little bit more about that story as we go along. And here, everybody, is our first sight of Chelmsford Cathedral. Okay, everybody, here we go the history of Chelmsford Cathedral the second smallest cathedral in England Chelmsford Cathedral is dedicated to Saint Mary the Virgin Saint Peter and Saint Said it became a cathedral when the Anglican Diocese of Chelmsford was created in 1914 it is the seat of the Bishop of Chelmsford a lot of history relating to the building of the cathedral has been lost with time. But what we do know is that it began life as a simple parish church around the time that the market town was formed, sometime around 1200. Today, Chelmsford Cathedral is the second smallest cathedral in England. The church underwent major rebuilds in the 15th and early 16th centuries and the extensions were made from flint rubble, stone and brick. The church has an impressive tower with a spire and a ring of 13 bells. Tragedy struck the building in 1800 whilst work was being undertaken in the vaults. Workmen were laying to rest a local notable when the accident occurred on Friday 17th of January 1800. The workmen were digging too close to one of the pillars supporting the roof. As a result the pillar slipped into the hole and the nave partially collapsed. The job of rebuilding was passed on to the county architect John Johnson, who was also responsible for the building of the town Shire Hall and the stone bridge that crosses the River Can and into Molsham. There are a few secrets that Chelmsford Cathedral hides. They include the first floor above the main entrance which used to host the Essex County Records Office is now storage to very rare first edition books. These books are on display in the church around four times a year, but they cannot be accessed out of these times. The collection includes the first edition of Martin Luther's works in German, which was printed in 1540, which was in his lifetime. There are war memorials hanging from the roof of the cathedral, which are not allowed to be cleaned or refurbished they are supposed to rot away from the church's atmosphere. War memorials are hung in churches and they rot. That is normal, that's their job. They are meant to be hung until they die away. St Paul's Cathedral London have some hanging just as threads. Inside the left hand chapel at the back of the cathedral stands a statue of a Jewish mother who is holding her dead child in her lap. It can't be moved as it is fixed to the floor tiles and sits in the center of the chapel. It tells the story of the Holocaust and is one of the strongest pieces of art in the building. Saint Said's chapel includes a sculpture of a naked Jesus. This figure of Christ is a bit shocking for some who enter the chapel as he is naked on the cross. The figure can be found on the wall of the right hand chapel where most of the clergy meet for their morning prayers. The pillars inside the cathedrals were built during medieval times 
and they were actually placed in the building upside down. When the original church was first erected, it was the first of its kind. Most churches were built out of wood, and this was the first to be made with stone. There is also a man-made stone in the centre, which is noticeably white. The only other church that has this in the UK is St George's Chapel at Windsor Castle, where royal weddings take place. The graveyard surrounding Chelmsford Cathedral is also notably interesting. To begin with, it used to be much larger, and signs of where the graveyard was cut away to make way for roads and buildings can be visibly seen around the perimeter of the churchyard. Most of his redevelopment occurred after 1800. A notable grave also exists and belongs to three unfortunate females who fell victim to a disastrous fire in nearby Tyndall Street and parts of Chelmsford High Street in 1808. The women who perished were Mary Ann Woolmer, Mary Elizabeth Eve and Mary Smith. The gravestone can still be seen in the cathedral churchyard and reads Prepare for death, ere ye retire to rest, for ye know what a day may bring forth. The 1808 fire was not the only time that fire struck the town. Another disastrous event occurred just four years earlier, and again in Tyndall Street. This time the victims were 13 Hanoverian soldiers who burnt to death at the rear of the Spotted Dog public house a public house which no longer exists. These 13 soldiers were billeted in the stables behind the spotted dog. It is believed they were unfamiliar with the English language and the cat used to keep the door shut. As a result, when the 1804 fire broke out, they were unable to get out of the stable and all 13 soldiers perished in the flames. The soldiers are buried in the cathedral grounds and Tyndall Street is believed to be haunted. I have a few connections with the cathedral myself. My fifth great uncle, Simon Jaynes, was married here on the 28th of February, 1764, to his wife, Anne Stokes. Two of their children were baptized in the church, including William Jaynes in 1765 and Rebecca in 1768. Sadly, Rebecca only lived until she was a year old and her infant burial was here within the cathedral churchyard in 1769. Earlier still, my eighth great-grandparents are also buried here. James Janes of Margaretting in Chelmsford and his wife Susanna, who died in 1726. One generation earlier and we find Abel Janes of Chelmsford my ninth great-grandfather, whose son William was an early pilgrim who travelled to the USA. His descendants established Janesville, Wisconsin, and a few notable actors too, including Henry, Peter, Jane and Bridget Fonda, and the famous American artist Norman Rockwell. Abel Janes worshipped here in Chelmsford Cathedral, and may well be buried there too, although his record of burial has been lost with time, possibly as a result of civil war, which has left many gaps in the English records. Okay, everybody, a big, big thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this episode about the history of Chelmsford Cathedral. And stay safe, keep well, and Yana and I will see you all soon. Bye for now.